Uh, hey, I'm Aaron Turner from Sumac, and uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about some of the gear I use. Just as a sort of preamble to this, um, I'd like to say that I know very little about the technical aspects of how guitar gear works. And the process for me in terms of finding what I like has always just been about what feels good and what sounds right. And that's uh, a simplification of what has been um, kind of a lifelong process at this point of just trying out a lot of different things and always hearing a specific sound that I want and trying to find out what it is that's out there that I can make the, that sound or those sounds with. Um, I wouldn't say that that uh, journey for finding the perfect sound is over. Um, I think it's kind of an ongoing thing. Uh, but I would say at this point, there are at least a few tools I've found that um, are pretty close to what I want and a few things which I think are about as perfect as they can be. Um, I think the first thing I would start out with are actually the guitars because, uh, I mean, the guitar is obviously the most primary tool uh, of anything uh, that I use. and. Um, also the first thing I started playing. I started playing acoustic first, uh, sort of at my parents' behest. I wanted to go straight to electric guitar, but the, that was uh, squashed initially. They wanted to make sure that I had uh, prolonged interest in the instrument. So I went from a crappy acoustic to a couple of crappy electrics. And finally, over time, I was able to start uh, getting instruments that were more to my liking. So these are electrical guitar company guitars, um, both custom builds. I have been using these for, I think over 10 years now, not these specific instruments, but um, instruments from this company. Uh, Kevin Burkett, the guy who founded EGC and is still the primary guy behind it, showed up at an ISIS show in um, Georgia at the Bottle Tree, and I'm not sure what year that was, but I'm guessing it was somewhere around maybe 2007 or so. And he brought one of, uh, I think one of his earlier instruments, which was an all aluminum body, aluminum neck guitar. And uh, he was like, hey, do you want to try this at Soundcheck? And um, my interest in guitars that are sort of um, idiosyncratic in nature definitely piqued my curiosity in, in terms of what he was doing with his stuff. Uh, so I tried it out at Soundcheck. I immediately loved it and asked him if I could take it on the rest of our tour, which I, which I did. And um, ever since then, I've been playing pretty much exclusively EGC guitars, at least for the heavy bands that I'm in. Uh, I find that uh, the kind of the the frequency range that they offer is awesome. Uh, a lot of low end, a lot of biting top end. Uh, they are nearly indestructible, which you know comes in handy for the amount of traveling that we do and also the kind of uh, physical abuse that I tend to put my instruments through. Um, I also uh, like that I have a personal connection with the person who's making these. Kevin is an awesome guy. I feel like we have uh, some musical uh, common ground between us and he definitely knows what uh, I want in an instrument and um, has done a lot of work with me to try to build basically the perfect instrument. Uh, so this is a custom build I had him do maybe two years ago or three years ago now. Um, much along the lines of some of my other EGCs. It's a baritone scale. Um, pickups that he made which are um, High output, low gain, uh, pretty wide frequency spectrum, uh, aluminum neck. And then this one here is the most recent from him. This is actually a prototype of a signature model he's making for me, um, which was based loosely off the specs for this previous guitar. I had to make a few changes. It's a new pickup, which is an even broader uh, frequency spectrum. Um, and a slightly bigger radius on the neck. And then that's pretty much the only change from this last one. So this, is, I think, is pretty close to what the final signature model will be for me from EGC. And uh, this is the first tour it's been on, and I'm definitely very, very happy with it. 
Uh, so that's pretty much it on those. Um, but uh, aside from my relationship with Kevin, even if I didn't know the guy, these would be the guitars I would want to play because they're perfectly suited to this music. Uh, I feel like they've got kind of a great overall sound and feel, but I also think that they lend themselves especially well to what I'm doing in the context of this band. Um, next, I can talk about amp stuff. This setup for me is a little bit unusual. Uh, Sumac does travel around a lot. We all live in different places. Um, when we do tours out here or in Europe, we're often using rented or borrowed gear. This head does belong to me. Everything else is pretty much borrowed, with the exception of the power amp that I'm using on the other side of the stage. Um, I'm never super particular about cabinets. Um, uh, heads are really kind of the more important thing for me. My main head that I've used on pretty much all our recordings is a Fryat uh, Pitbull Lead or Ultra Lead. I love that amp. Uh, I've been using it uh, for quite a while now. And this has become uh, a good alternate amp for me. I'm trying to slowly accumulate gear in the different places that we go. So this is kind of my East Coast rig now as this is the, the main head. Um, this is Orange's, I guess, more modern high gain amp, which I found definitely suits me very well. And then I've got a Fryat power amp, which I'll get to in a second, um, which I fly with, which uh, basically I just use as a slave on the other side of the stage. Um, this is the first band, heavy band I've been in, where I'm the only guitar player. Old Man Gloom and Isis both had two guitar players and I always liked the density that that offered, um, but when this band started, I wanted to be able to kind of showcase more of the nuances of each player. So having a stripped down lineup has been really effective in that regard. A little bit scary for me to not have another guitar player to hide behind, but also a really good challenge. Um, the setup on uh, stage right, and there's not a whole lot to say about it. This is really just basically replicating the sound uh, of the orange. Uh, however, there is a little bit of um, tone definition I can do with uh, this, and also I can control these two cabinets individually, which for me doesn't make a big difference, but it's nice for Brian because he's on this side. The bottom cabinet can be super loud, and this one can be a little, a little quieter, so it's not just completely tearing his head off. Um, I will say again that Fryat has made the stuff that I find uh, the most applicable to what I'm doing with guitar. It really works well for me and I've used quite a lot of power amps over the years and this one has definitely been the best so far and it's, it's heavy but it's easy to transport which is good when you're doing a lot of flying. I do a little bit to kind of create the illusion of two guitars. I use this Strymon uh, Deco um, which has just a, a kind of microsecond of delay for the rig on the other side, uh, a little bit of uh, pitch uh, wobble in it, and that's about it. But it kind of creates just enough offset between the two uh, guitar rigs that um, you know it does kind of broaden the sound a little bit and thicken it up. Um, so the way I'm running things is uh, the rig on this side is kind of like the main amp and then I'm turning that one off and on intermittently um, or fading it in and out uh, using a volume pedal which kind of helps accentuate dynamics um, and uh, also just you know offer something that's pretty much full bore when uh, we're in that mode which is much of the time. Um, the rest of what's on here is uh, the tuner. Obviously, that's nothing special, but that's the tuner I've been using forever and works well for me. I know how to read it. I'm not particularly adept with technology, so when I find something I like, I like to stick with it. Uh, this Death by Audio uh, and the Massif are both very noisy fuzzes. Uh, I like both of these. Um, in terms of just adding some extra instability to my sound. Um, I like kind of oscillating between doing something that's very controlled and precise and something that's really unpredictable. Uh, something that's more musically conventional versus something that 
uh, veers more towards the realm of sound abstraction. And definitely the Apocalypse and the Massive both help in that regard. Uh, the Massive stuff is built by a guy in Japan who is in a band called Endon, who uh, we played with and are good friends with. And it's always nice to make a personal connection with people that are building the things we use. Um, and then this is a reverb, which is definitely the best reverb I've ever used. And if I kind of had to narrow my setup down to one pedal, this would be it. I could definitely live with just this and a good head and pretty much do most of the things I like doing. Um, and then finally, this is a looping pedal that I've started using more recently. Uh, I was using the Line 6 uh, delay loopers, but I never used the delay. I only used it for the looping function, and I found that this does all of that in a much smaller space. Um, this is used primarily to create segues between songs or to just kind of build up textural stuff within the bodies of the song. Uh, but I like this a lot. It's, like I said, takes up very little real estate and um, sounds pretty good. The sound quality doesn't get degraded no matter how long or how densely layered the loop is. And then the last bit is just this uh, uh, sampler here from Electro Harmonics. And I don't really do anything in terms of live sampling with this. I just store uh, samples in here and trigger them at different points during the set. Um, there's not a whole lot of that going on. Uh, we try to keep our recordings and our live shows um, mostly centered on what we are playing uh, and, um, you know, try to keep it very simple and focused. However, there are a few studio tricks we did on the record that I wanted to be able to replicate live and that's very handy in that regard. Uh, and it's also good in terms of just having something that I can create new samples with on the road if, uh, if I have another idea that I come up with that I want to be able to integrate into the set. The last thing, um, not super involved, but uh, the vocal mic. Um, this is a Heil, I think it's a PR20. Um, Heil is a company that Isis started working with, I think maybe about 10 years ago, and I've been using this vocal mic pretty much ever since then. Um, and I don't know what it sounds like out front, uh, but uh, it always sounds good in the monitors, um, and it's been really reliable. And um, this is more of an aesthetic thing, but I really like the shape of this mic, and I found that after years and years of playing music, um, things don't necessarily need to look cool, but if you've got to look at the same implement every day over and over, you start to notice things that either you like or dislike. And I have to say, this is one of the more pleasing mic shapes I've encountered. So uh, that's it. Hi, I'm Brian Cook from the band Sumac. Uh, gonna give you a brief overview of what I'm playing on, on this current tour. The nature of the band is that we travel a lot and we don't live in the same cities so a lot of our back line tends to rotate based on availability and what we can borrow and cobble together in whatever cities we're playing. I guess the most important thing is to start with the stuff that's consistent in which case this is probably the main thing this is my uh, electrical guitar company series 2 bass. Uh, there's nothing customized about it it's just their series 2 um, I started playing on that about a year ago because, uh, again, we do a lot of flying and a lot of traveling, and one of the things that's really stressful about flying and traveling with gear is that if you have like a Gibson, you know, vintage Gibson bass or whatever, no matter how nice your flight case is, you always have to worry if the neck's going to break when you're getting off a plane. So I figured aluminum necks are pretty indestructible, so uh, they also happen to sound very good, so that's a definite plus. They're a lot brighter, and uh, the pickups are a lot hotter than most other basses i played in the past, so it tends to lend itself pretty, pretty well to what we're doing. Uh, so that's probably the most consistent thing in the setup. Uh, I run that through this pedal configuration. Uh, and I guess this is pretty consistent too. 
Most of the tone for the band comes out of this Fuzzrocious rat tail pedal, which, uh, yeah, is, it, that's on for pretty much 95% of the set. And that's really kind of, really kind of it in terms of, of tone. It's all kind of that thing, you know. Uh, when I play in Russian circles, we tend to have a lot of different fuzzes and distortions and overdrives just to have a lot of texture. But the name of the game with this band is having things be really simple and austere and not having a lot of baggage and things to travel with. So trying to do it in the most stripped down, economical way possible. So I use the whammy for some octave stuff because Aaron and I play in uh, different tuning configurations. So a lot of times, uh, it's just easier instead of having to tune all my strings super low, I can just do drop octaves on that. And there's some other tomfoolery with it as well. Uh, and then this is a Dwarfcraft Eau Claire Thunder, uh, which is a knockoff of the Russian Big Muffs, the big green tank ones, uh, with a couple extra features in it. I don't use it a whole bunch, but uh, it's, it's good for getting really long, sustained uh, notes and feedback and, and things like that. So uh, definitely adds a little bit of, of variety to, to the palette, although it's, it's, not, uh, it's not featured very heavily, but when it comes into play, it's, it's very useful. Uh, a little bit of reverb, don't use that a whole lot, but uh, for some of the noisier sections, uh, it kind of helps even things out a little bit. And then a little bit of wah just for really long filter sweeps. You know, wah, I think, is a very dangerous thing, especially on bass. But uh, I tend to use it just more uh, to have yeah, long filter sweeps and just to have uh, some variations in, in tonality. So there's not a lot of wah-wah action, but just little tonal discrepancies. And in terms of rigs, uh, I always just play an 810, just because I know what they sound like and they, they tend to be pretty consistent. Tonight, this is just the house 810. Uh, hopefully all the speakers work, but uh, I've been told that they do. Uh, and then amp-wise, I'm just using this uh, Galleon Kruger 800. Uh, that has been the amp for this tour. It's borrowed from some friends of ours up in Boston because that's where we started out of. And then it's working just fine. Uh, amps tend to, yeah, we tend to take what we can get just because, you know, if we're playing in Europe or flying out to the West Coast, it's it's going to be a different thing every time, but this thing's a good workhorse and it's loud and it's uh, pretty easy to dial in and get just a nice even tone. And then for the actual grit, you know, I just go back to the rat tail and dial that in. So and that's kind of it. There's not a lot of tonal variation, you know, there's not like a lot of crazy dynamics in terms of how the bass sounds. So uh, it's kind of just finding that one sweet spot and that's all I really have to do, just ride that for a while. That's it. Hey, Nick from Sumac here. Um, this is what I'm playing on our tour right now. Um, this is a Ludwig Keystone X kit that they were kind enough to facilitate for this trip. Um, sounds really nice. I like it. Um, we got some Sabian cymbals here. Um, they're broken, a lot of them, um, but I do like them. They sound very nice. Um, specifics, um, I have a 21-inch bash ride. Um, it's a double A. I really like it as a crash. Um, sounds nice. Um, that's like a couple broken cymbals together. Um, it's a legacy ride, and it's forget what the top one is. They sound cool. Um, AA 24 inch medium ride. I love that thing. 
it broke two nights ago, um, but it still sounds nice. 22 inch V crash, sing rules. Um, I'm gonna have to switch it with one of those other broken ones because one of them's less broken than this one, but I think it's got another night left in it. Um, yeah, the drums are sweet. They're like the Keystone, I think it's Keystone X. I find them pretty loud. They're a little smaller. The toms are a little smaller than what I normally play, but they're still a very loud drum, so it's it's pretty cool. Um, sticks, got some sticks there. Uh, Vader 2B, I like those sticks a lot. Um, DW5000 double pedal. Yeah.